Hello everyone, I'm going to try a different method of recording your lecture in which each slide will have its own recording. I'll do video just for this slide and then the other slides you'll just hear my voice. And you can let me know if you prefer this or the other way in which I recorded in Zoom. Today we are talking about the scientific method. First we need to ask, what is science? Science is a way of finding out about the world using evidence. All of us uses the scientific method. Every time we observe something that raises a question for us, and then we guess at the answer, and then we test to see whether or not our guess is correct. All of us, including scientists, use the scientific method when we come across a puzzling situation. We will observe the situation, ask questions about it, make our best guess as to why the situation is happening, Spinning. We might test our guess by trying to fix the situation. And we're going to learn a seven step version of the scientific method. You might see this listed in other ways in other textbooks, but these are the seven steps we'll learn for this class. The seven steps of the scientific method, and remember this is in your textbook if you want to read more. They are observe, question, formulate a hypothesis, make a prediction, test or experiment, gather results, and then make a conclusion. So let's see what we mean by these by looking at the following example. So let's see how your discussion lines up with the seven steps of the scientific method. This woman has a flashlight that doesn't work. She observes it, turns it on and off, and it just doesn't light up. So we can see in number two, she's asking herself, why doesn't this work? Step three, what was that? It is form a hypothesis. So she has two different hypotheses. Perhaps the batteries don't work or Perhaps the light bulb is burned out. What predictions can she make about this? She can predict that if she replaces the batteries, the flashlight will work. Or if she replaces the light bulb, then perhaps her flashlight will work. So she can test this by doing those things. And then she checks the results. Does the flashlight light up now with either new batteries or with a light bulb? So we can see in this example, the batteries did not make the flashlight work. So, she has to reject the conclusion that it was the batteries. However, in the second, for her second hypothesis, she replaced the light bulb and now she sees that the flashlight works. So that confirms her hypothesis. So perhaps your goat is sick because it ate some trash. Or maybe it is sick because it does not have enough water. 
How do you test these hypotheses? Elio can pause this while you discuss. So not knowing much about goats, we could test the trash prediction by seeing if the goat is eating. Maybe if it ate trash, its stomach is hurting and it can't eat. Or maybe it's not pooping, so the trash is blocking it. If you think that is the problem, then your next step might be to contact a veterinarian to come and open up the stomach to see if there is trash. So she tests your prediction by doing surgery. The results would be, yes, there is trash in the stomach, or no, there isn't trash. And then you would draw a conclusion based on those results. So you can take time to discuss another scenario. How would you test that your goat isn't getting enough water? And for the second scenario, Let's say that your tomato plant is not producing tomatoes. What's your observation and what are your questions? So Elio, please give the class some time to discuss this and then we will proceed to the next slide. Now we are going to do an activity outside that will take you through the first couple steps of the scientific method. We are going to use field journals, so you can just take your notebooks from the class. You're, every time you do an experiment or make observations, you need to record information such as the name of the project, the date, the time, where you are located, if you can get GPS coordinates from your phone, that would be helpful, but also record what town you're in, what department, what country. We should take the temperature, the air temperature, because that will influence observations that we see in nature. You can take photographs on your phone. You can also make illustrations to help you remember what you saw. So we're going to go outside and in a one meter by one meter square area, we're going to record all the plants and the animals that we see. Also the soil condition, the light condition, everything else, even rocks and trash. So this activity will help you practice being an observer. This is an example of what you might write in your field notebook. And if you take pictures, make sure you write down what you took pictures of. And if you take illustrations, then label them. And I hope that your observations lead you to ask questions which is step two of the scientific method. Here are some ideas to guide your questioning. Ask why, what, and how. If you see a butterfly, ask where did that butterfly come from? Where is it going? What is it doing? How is it doing it? If you see a plant you don't recognize, ask why is it there? What is the plant? How does it survive? So now I want you to organize yourself into small groups. Elio will decide how many and what the logistics are considering there is COVID. I want you to take your notebooks outside and you're going to record what you see. If I was there, I would give you some instruments 
to make measurements, but unfortunately we can't do that this time. I am going to go outside and do this activity too and video it. So I would like Alio to stop this video and begin the next one. And Alio can also decide if after you go outside, if you come back to class, or if it's time for a break, or if you decide to meet tomorrow or another day to discuss what you did. But I expect everyone to take notes in their notebook, even if you're working in a group. So Alio, please start video three, part two.